Greetings. We're going to continue on in our series of our soul's yearnings for, and today it's compassion. And so looking at the continuing uh, series going through the book of Philippians, and we're in chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, if you want to read along. Now, there have been times that I've read Jesus' words and lessons and warnings, and have thought that his words were for everyone else other than myself. Hmm. But if the number of times my eyes and my heart have been, been opened to the urgent needs of others is any indication whatsoever, then I have to admit that the passage uh, that, from Matthew 25, as Jesus speaks, is speaking to me and my needs to correct my heart. Where it says, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Now Jan and I the other day got to experience helping a, a local homeless person, which Mother Teresa and her charity and mercy order uh, does on a daily basis, serving the poorest of the poor, the neediest of their community. And often I'm reminded as whenever I'm offered opportunities to help others, I often think in terms of, do I have the time? Do I want to get involved in someone's life's struggles? Do I want to subject myself to doing the hard stuff for someone I don't even know? Those questions point to my poor attitude for the work of service to those in need. While well, Mother Teresa said she saw the face of Jesus in everyone she ministers to and recognized the blessings to be able to serve God in, in that work. My attitude is pathetic by comparison, for she truly epitomized what it is to have the compassion of Christ. And she demonstrated a life well lived by the successfully emptying herself and serving others. I like the definition someone made for compassion which is being your pain in my heart. I don't wish to overgeneralize the thought, but as I look at the gospel stories, I often find that it's the women disciples who are, have to put their hearts along with their heads into their faith in Christ. It was a woman who overwhelmed with remorse for her past and gratitude for the forgiveness through Christ who literally poured her wealth of perfume on the, Jesus' feet and then wiped it with her hair. It was a group of women who stood at the foot of the cross and wept as Jesus died. Women who moved by grief were the ones who went to the tomb to finish preparations for Jesus' body for burial. And I see the women who were moved uh, in such a way by their hearts of compassion into faiths of action, while the men are depicted in Scripture far too often as, as making, having a hard time trying to grasp mentally what was going on and running away to make sense of it all. As it was in Thomas's case, the questioning in his mind until all the facts became clear. Our faith definitely needs to reside both in mind and our heart. Yet my presumption is that our actions of faith come first from compassionate hearts that have been touched by Christ. For it is from there that Christ-like love is modeled even to the point of giving oneself away. The first point I have is heart's compassion, looking at paraphrase Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 that go like this. If my words of encouragement have helped you stay true to the faith in the past, then respond accordingly in the present. If any comfort of love close to their side in your suffering 
then please now respond properly to my request. If you belong to that community brought into existence by the Holy Spirit and enjoy any fellowship with one another as a result, then live accordingly. If you know anything of the mercy and the compassion shown you by God and Christ, respond to my request. Paul asks that the Philippians strive for deep concern for each other that is full of love that originates in your love for Christ. Common souls, common affection for one another, common desire to live together in harmony and adopting an attitude that believes others better than oneself. A poem I found, Ask, asks, if, if, if. A poem that is credited to Wilhelm Busch. It goes like this. To, some, to become is not so difficult. On the other hand, being is very much so. Becoming a mother is not so difficult. On the other hand, being a mother is very much so. Becoming a Christian is not so difficult, but being a Christian is so much more so. It's easy to say that you are something. The difficulty comes when you live it out. Taking up one's cross and following Christ means losing oneself to the needs of others, as Mother Teresa did uh, for the least of them. My second point is to empty oneself, reading from verses 3 and 4 that go like this. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Very true. The ideal is something of an anathema in our Western culture, individualism, as we strive for personal happiness and independence. In contrast, Paul shares, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. In my flesh, I do not share, I do not share on behalf of his body in filling up that which is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Of this church, I was made a minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed on me for your benefit, that I might fully carry out the preaching of the work of God from Colossians chapter 1. Paul was facing the possibility of death, but was willing to do so for the sake of the church's body, continued growth. Paul was willing to die as he had lived in submission to God's will for his life. Our ultimate example of emptying uh, oneself in service to others is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the supreme example of humble, self-sacrificing, self-denying, self-giving service. Paul uses a Christ hymn from the church's liturgy of his own day as he shares these verses. Uh, my third point, our model from verses 5 through 8 that read as such. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Christ in the form of God depicts a radiant garment of which Jesus was clothed in, but shed for our sakes. He willingly took it off for us. He did not consider it a thing to be grasped, meaning Jesus did not consider remaining in heaven with the Father when the eternal lives of all people was at stake. He willingly gave everything away for the sake of others. He voluntarily emptied himself of that which was the preexistent Christ. He emptied his glory, his independent exercise of authority, of his prerogatives and attributes of deity and his majesty. 
Jesus poured out the fullness to enrich others. And that's why in 1 John 3, 16, it says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. He became a slave and set himself to obey God the Father and serve humankind. Jesus went by stages into this humiliation descent. He came as a man. He came as a poor man. And not just a poor man, but a slave in poverty. And then went on to become a man, a poor man, a slave that was persecuted and was led to the cross and died. When he said he could call down legions of angels to protect him if he desired, he was showing that it was his compassion and love that led him down the path of death and a love that actually held him to the cross for us. Up to that point, we read of Jesus' self-humiliation, and now it is God who acts in exaltation of Christ. Matthew 16, uh, 25 and 26 says, whoever chooses to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will find it. In Matthew 18, 4, whoever humbles himself as his child will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 23, whoever will exalt himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus is elevated to the de- from the depths to the heights, from the curse of the tree to the right hand of the Father. Those are the promises of a successful life lived well for God. The last point I have is exaltation of Christ, reading verses 9 through 11 that say this. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hmm. His name, what Jesus is was a humiliation of step by step, but his exaltation was immediate. The verb exalted is not comparative as if Jesus is suddenly someone greater than he was before his incarnation. The verb is superlative, meaning matchless and unbeatable, I guess. Christ was made himself so low and was raised so lofty and placed above all things. He is a name above all names. When I say names here, it's something more than just a name. It designates the inner person. Christ was conferred by the Father upon him, a name that distinguishes him from all others. At that name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess upon heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every, every tongue shall share that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In exalting Christ and giving him the name above all names, God uh, desires that every person might proclaim openly and gladly that Christ is Lord. And that everyone might be through him reconciled to the Father. Brooks Ramsey said that he made an interesting discovery when he says this, in the Hebrew language, the word for compassion comes from the root word of womb. The picture is of a birthing. Something new is being born. And if I apply this to a human experiences, it means that my compassionate acts always give the other person another chance. I do not hold past failures against them. I offer a fresh start. I want this for myself from others. Am I willing to give it to the other person? Such compassion will dramatically change the way we relate to each other. Paul's own descent into humility is expressed in his words, as he said of himself, I am the least of the apostles, 1 Corinthians. 
I'm the very least of all the saints from Ephesians. I am the foremost of sinners in 1 Timothy. The dating, respectively, of each one of those was A.D. 59, A.D. 63, and then 64. As the years pass, Paul goes ever lower, growing downward. As his self-esteem sinks, so his rapture of praise and adoration of God rises up. And this willingness to be God's servant unto suffering increases, again, Compassion, your pain in my heart. Let me share a true story that I heard of. From years ago, a young mother was making her way across the hills of South Wales, carrying her young baby in her arms. When she was overtaken by a blinding blizzard, and she never reached her destination when the blizzard had subsided, her body was found by searchers and beneath a mound of snow. But they discovered that before her death, she had been able to take off her outer clothing and wrap them about her baby. And then when she had wrapped, they had wrapped the child, to their great surprise, the baby was alive. Hmm. She had mounded herself, her whole body over her child and given her life so the child might live proving the depths of her mother's love for her child. Years later, that child grew up David Lloyd George. He grew into manhood and became the prime minister of Great Britain and one of the England's greatest statesmen. Wow. Alex Haley, the author of the book and movie later, was Roots had a picture in his office showing a turtle sitting atop a fence. The picture is there to remind him of a lesson he said he learned long ago. If you see a turtle on a fence post, you know he had some help. (laughs) Alex went on to say that any time I start thinking, wow, isn't this marvelous what I have done? I look at that picture and remember this turtle, which is me how he got up on that post. Compassion. Christ taking our pain into his own heart has lifted us up out of the mud of our sin. And by the blood spilt and the flesh sacrificed, we have been placed above evil's intentions and in the loving arms of our Lord. Our soul's yearning is for that kind of compassion. Receive it, I pray, through Jesus Christ, and then extend it to others as you go. I pray in his name. Amen.